Yo, what about Fistax fam? This is Road to Recovery Week 3. Today we're going to learn about some pretty cool concepts in exercise science and corrective exercise more specifically. We're going to talk a lot about today how to build your own corrective exercise program as well as a few very other useful bits and um, nibs of wisdom to really help you out, um, especially if you're somebody interested in learning more knowledge about the science behind exercising. So um, first off, um, I usually start off these videos with a little introduction about my own journey. So I started off, um, I had over maybe 20, close to 30 injuries within a very short time frame. And I had seven therapists slash um, doctors give, give up on trying to heal me. So now I'm here, I'm trying to do research and heal myself. And that's what we're doing here. This is my third week of doing research and educating myself because before I can know what to do to heal myself, I have to learn, I have to do research on so I know what to do. Um, it's been, um, this week has been a lot better for me than the previous three weeks. I noticed that stretching um, has definitely been helping my knee pain and my lower back pain. Also, basic stability exercises like the dead bug um, and the bird dog have also been helping my back pain. And um, nutrition-wise, I'm definitely eating clean. A lot of fruits and vegetables are very important. Um, I noticed that omega-3 fatty acids have been helping me a lot, a lot, and also vitamin D. So actually salmon, having um, two cans of salmon cumulatively spread across the week is just been one of the biggest helps for me nutrition wise because salmon has been linked in a lot of studies to um, reduce joint inflammation, reduce pain in all types of people, especially people with arthritis. So now let's get into the actual road to recovery, the science beh behind the things I learned this week. So in creating an exercise program, there's four steps. First things first, you want to assess yourself, see what muscles are tight and what muscles are overactive. Um, doing your own assessments, that's a completely different topic on its own. But once you have the information, once you know what's tight, what needs to be, uh, and what's weak, and what's, then you can create your own exercise program. So first things first, in the actually doing an exercise program, you want to inhibit the muscles. So 30 seconds of self-myofascial release, which is just a fancy word for massage or foam rolling, on the tender or target area. So these are the um, tight muscles that you want to inhibit through SMR, through self-myofascial release. 30 seconds per area. After, in the workout, after you have foam rolled, then you want to stretch those same target muscles. 30 seconds per stretch for a tight muscle, or you... What you do is you contract the muscle, maybe with an isometric type of contraction or a um, dynamic contraction, and then you follow it by a 30 second stretch. It's called an, a neuromuscular um, stretch. It's just a different type of stretch. So, after you, so first you foam roll, then you stretch, and then you activate the muscles that are underactive. So, um, you want to do something called positional isometrics. Um, which is just pretty much a fancy word for an isometric exercise, and or isolated strengthening of the weak muscles. Um, hold up, what's going on here? All right, I don't know what's going on here. There we go. All right. So you want to do positional isometrics. So um, the muscles that you know are underactive, you want to individually isolate them in order to activate them. So let's say I notice that I have overactive hand. I have um, tight hamstrings and tight hip flexors, and my glutes are underactive, they're weak. So after I've stretched, after I first foam rolled my hamstrings then uh, and hip flexors, and then stretched those two muscles, then hey, I have weak glutes, I wanna activate my glutes. Then you would activate your glutes, and then um, you wanna do that for, if you're using isometrics, four sets, first 25% of your maximum effort, then 50, then 75, then 100% of maximal effort. For, and if you're doing um, dynamic movements, which is isolated strengthening, then you wanna do 10 to 15 reps of a two second isometric with the four second eccentric. Um, and then what you wanna do is you wanna integrate everything. 
So um, integrate those dynamic movements um, with things like squats, pretty much compound movements, so not isolation um, exercises. And when you do 10 to 15 reps under control. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. And the one thing that I really hope you got out of this is if you're going through joint pain, um, you're not alone. You know, if you know, I'm young, I'm I'm 20 years old, um, and I've have more joint pain than, than than half half the older people out there. So just know you're not alone in your struggle. And it's always, always possible to be physically active, no matter what you're going through, um, joint wise. It's important that you stay active, but it's also important that you make sure you take care of your joint health at the same time. Hope you all have a great day. Peace out.